conclusion of the lawsuit? How did it how did it end? It was thrown out because of statute of limitations, which the lawyers knew that before they started, but they had to do it by law. Okay, calm down. Okay, one my question now is yeah. but there there was yeah. there were there's other recent victims though, aren't there? There are a lot of recent victims, yeah. but let me say let me say this to you. The White House boys only cover from fifties to the sixties. That's it, because the White House was closed down. Okay, what are you going to say, Bill? I was telling Jerry he was getting loud. <laughs> That's okay. Well, it's a country know, say I, it. I, 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 I know. Don't, I know. I, I'll apologize. To the, no, no, I don't worry. I have, to, I have to apologize, Ed, to the public, and please, all of you listening, it's going to listen to me. I'll never break this anger, and I apologize yeah. for it, but it's just something that I have to deal with and the other people. I mean, some people don't even like talking to me. Okay. Because they think I'm a, they think I'm a, a you know, angry, angry. I am an angry man. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, but the thing is, now at this point, now everything's out of court. There's nothing left. There's no legal recourse available to you. There's uh, legal no, legalities I, going. Please, there's please. legalities going on right now, of where these boys are to be reinterred, that that were found on that property. And uh, as you know, we did it. We did receive a public apology from the governor and the cabinet on January the 21st when I was in Tallahassee. And I wept. I sat on that bench in the front and wept because I never thought I would ever, ever hear admittance to guilt and being very sorry for what was done to us. And every one of those cabinet members were sincere, including the governor of the state, Governor Scott. And I actually wept. And I'm embarrassed about it, but, you know, I'm not as tough as I thought I was, I guess. So, Bill, you were about to say something? Well, he, there's nothing to be embarrassed about with something like that because that happened to me, too. I mean, you know, it was a long time coming. We 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 tried to get that from them, and you know, finally they realized that what we were telling them did happen. And when they found out, and they finally realized that it happened, then they apologized. You know, and it wasn't them that did it. You know, if we could go back to the time that it happened, that's where the apology belongs. That, you know, but uh, you know, they know that this happened. And that's that's one one feather in our cap. We're now, not lying. We haven't been lying. We told the truth. We told them exactly what happened to us as kids. And as kids, they wouldn't listen. And then they weren't listening when we were adults. And now somebody finally did. That makes a lot of difference. It does and to it me. Because my whole, good. my whole thing with this whole situation is as it's been on me and my wife for the past eight, nine years now. I finally got what I begged for on Al Zero America that night. I spoke to their programmer, and he said, Jerry, what is it you want? And this has been quite a long time ago. I said, sir, I only want this personally for my personal self. I want an apology from the state of Florida, including the governor of this state, that would make me at least be able to lay down and get a little more rest for the rest of what life I have left. And second, I will say this, sir. Any man that ever had to go through what we had to go through by going to a place called the White House should be considered to be compensated because it ruined so many lives, so many li And that's all I had to say. And I got my apology. I'm going to be honest with you. In my position right now, whatever they would pay out is not going to change my lifestyle in any way, form, or fashion. I didn't do it for that. I did it because I love every one of these men that are out there, no matter what they've done in life or how they've ended up. I have too much compassion, and I will continue to hold that passion till I myself pass. Oh, okay. Another yeah. reason that we were there in Tallahassee at that time is because there were people that were matched DNA-wise with the kids that they exhumed. Now, these people were taking their loved ones, and they were having to reinter their remains, 
and they were having to eat, you know, they were having to bite the bullet. They were having to pay for it. Right. Well, we wanted to make sure that the state of Florida compensate them in some way to help them with these burials because there was one I know of that when they got their kid, they got the, the uh, bones, the remains of their loved one, they had to have a yard sale and take donations in order to get the money to reinter the body because they're True using story. The people. They're True not story. So, so we wanted to make sure that they did something, so we, we suggested, you know, 5000 but it went up to 7500 you know, to help these families reinter if they get a bone match, if they get a match with the DNA. So they that's going through the house right now, and it just passed. So they're going, anybody that uh, gets matched with the remains will get $7,500 to help reinter them wherever they wish. You want, you want to hear something sad about that, Ed? Sure. So far, I think there's only been seven or eight matches of only 12 donations of... Uh, of uh, DNA, right. the rest of the kids, the rest of their children, nobody will ever know their names. They'll never know how they died. And it's just, it, it's terrible. It, it's it terrible. Like somebody, if you, everything was done in hand, was written back in that day because they didn't <laughs> have computers. So they're sitting there and they write in anything they want as a cause of death. And like I said, they had some that tonsillectomy. They had some that died of pneumonia. They had some that died of TB, which there was never flu or, flu or something like that. Yeah. You know, and the flu. I mean, there were so many things that they were writing in. And you can tell that they were just dreaming up diseases or causes for death. Yeah, you, know? you were saying we'll, that Bill, we'll never know uh, Bill, because of what Jerry. You were saying that uh, uh, you actually witnessed the murder. Yes. Yep. Next yes, question. Said Can you describe yeah. it? Do I, sir? Can you describe it? Discuss it. I'd be happy to. Uh, Je- July the tenth, nineteen and sixty-one. Victor Prenzi, who was a professional quarterback, uh, he played for the Giants at one time. He played for the Denver Broncos well, at well, one let, time. Let me stop you there because we only have about eight minutes to, to finish up this, this last story. All right. To make a long story short, we were practicing football in the middle of the summer, which is against state regulations and laws for the state of Florida at that time. You are not allowed to be practicing in the summer and prepare yourself to go against the other schools and states that you would face. We were actually practicing against the law. It must have been 110 degrees in that gym that day. And we would either practice, we would practice in the gym or we would practice way out behind the school at the baseball field because if we practice on our football field, everybody could go by and see us practicing. Well, it was so hot in that gym that day. And Victor Prenzi, the quarterback that was our coach, was standing in the middle of the gym and we were doing crisscross passes. Edgar Elton got so out of breath that he couldn't even stand up and he collapsed in front of me. He was two people in front of me. And I ran up to him and I bent down on my knee and I said, what's the matter What's the matter, matter with you, Edgar? He said, Jerry, I'm not even supposed to be playing football. It states that I am not to be in any type of sports activity. I got up and tried to run towards Kidwell and, and, and Hatton, who was in the gym at the time, and I had attacked these guys when we were in the White House. I'm not going to lie to you about that. That's probably why I got 135 lashes, but that's immaterial. I knew that Hatton himself was scared to death of me. He was petrified of me. And I ran towards him because Edgar's still on his knees on the floor, not able to run, 
And when I ran towards him, he pulled his pistol and he said, MF, you take one more step and I'll blow you away right on this floor. And he could have got away with it. He could have got away with that. I, I returned back immediately and told Edgar to stay down. And Tidwell rushed over and grabbed me by the shoulder, pushed me back, told Edgar to get off his gold bricking ass and get back on that floor. Well, he made one more run, sir. And when he come back to get back in line, he fell like a rock and hit that gym floor. He was dead instantly, instantly dead. His heart had blew apart. He ran him to death. And when I talked to uh, law enforcement about it, that's considered either a second degree murder or first degree manslaughter. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. And Bill Price, you tell them what you saw, and they claim they tried to help that boy in that yellow jacket, which is a lie. You tell them what happened, buddy, when you were outside the gym kicking field goals. Tell them. Yeah, I was out on the football field, which is adjacent to the gym. And I was there for, you know, I was out there kicking and everything, and then I saw the commotion happen in the gym. And I saw all the boys, the other boys come out of the gym and head back towards the, the, the dorm. So when they took off and they went back towards the dorms, you know, of course, I'm sitting there, hey, what's going on? What's going on? And one of them came by the field, and he said, uh, Edgar fell, you know. Mm. I don't think he knew that Edgar was dead then. But they said that he got immediate, uh, somebody immediately came over and helped him. Well, four or five minutes later, I saw them come out with one of the, they had the old army cocks like they used in Korea. Yeah. You know, the, the canvas ones. Yeah. They, two of the boys had him on the cot and carried him towards the infirmary, towards the hospital. And I said, and, but they had the blanket over his face. So then I called one of the boys coming out that was out, and I said, what the hell happened? So then he started telling me that he collapsed and, you know, that he died. And then the, later on, I think they carried him to the hospital downtown afterwards, and that's when they checked, and they said that his heart blew up. But they said that they helped him immediately, and they did not. It was 45 minutes before they ever brought him out of there. And no Ed, way. you know, Ed, Ed, yeah. let, me state, let me state to you, I sent you the yellow jacket about his death. It says in the yellow jacket that this boy, Edgar, was not involved in any physical activity at the time. What do you think of that, Ed? What do you think of that, Ed? Well, there was it no one. Uh, it no states it right, right in the yellow jacket. And there was no autopsy or anything like that, of course, right? There was an autopsy. There was. There was an autopsy and found to be a heart attack to a degree. I think the boy, he told me that he had, he told me on the floor that he had asthma and he was not supposed to be participating in any fashion. Do you know how they do autopsies up there? Yeah, right. They had a sheriff chase a 15-year-old boy that ran away from the school. This sheriff's deputy was running behind the boy with a 30-30 rifle, okay. and he fired the rifle and hit the boy in the back of the head. He said that he was, was firing warning shots and killed this boy, and that was the last of the investigation. Yep. Name was Phillips. I knew him well. That was in 1961, Ed. Now 16 what? years old. Real quick, because we only got like a minute left. Now, when I was researching this to, to find a guest for the show, there was a senator that just was involved in something recently. Now, what, what's going Bill on with Nelson. that? Who? Was it Bill Nelson? No, or it's was a, it, uh, a woman. U.S. Congressman Bill Nelson is heavily involved in this, and he even made an or apology. Who was the governor? Uh, Robert Martinez, our ex-governor. And U.S. Senator Bill Nelson just made an apology to all of us okay. just last week so, in the newspaper. So um, real quick, is there any, is there any chance of anything it. getting reopened in this, a re uh, an investigation, some kind of conviction, some kind of lawsuit, anything? I don't know, Dad. Uh, we, you know what? We, the only we've thing been, we've been to do now, 
we're just going to try and uh, see if we can get some of the guys' money through uh, gotcha. the, uh, a claims bill. But I think 